True theatre is about testing limits, challenging established thoughts and pushing boundaries. If you want an example of what I'm on about, then head down to the Prince of Wales Theatre in London's West End and prepare yourself for something extraordinary. That's what I did when I recently went to see the Book of Mormon. This is the story of two young men, Kevin Price and Arnold Cunningham, who, having finished their training to be missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, not only now have the title Elder in front of their name, but are about to be sent out on their two-year mission to find, recruit and baptise new members of the religion. Elder Price is very devout and has been praying to Heavenly Father to be sent to Orlando, where he hopes to shine. Elder Cunningham's dreams are slightly more prosaic. He prays that Heavenly Father will give him a best friend and enable him to do something that makes his earthly father proud of his son. The two young men are paired together and sent out on their mission to Uganda. Oh well. On arrival, they are robbed at gunpoint point by soldiers of the local warlord and then have their faith tested as the villagers, led by Mafala Hatimbi and his daughter Nabulungi, tell them the reality of their lives and who they blame for their woes. In such inhospitable surroundings can the faith of Elder Price and the, let's be honest, overactive imagination of Elder Cunningham be enough to see them through their mission and enable them to spread the word of the Book of Mormon. Well, a couple of years ago, my two housemates saw the Book of Mormon. One loved it and the other hated it, and this seems to be quite a common reaction to what is considered to be a very Marmite show. Given the polarity of opinions around the production, not to mention the fact that during lockdown it went through a bit of a cast revolt, leading to a review and rewrite, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. I'm happy to report that whilst I still really dislike Marmite, I absolutely loved The Book of Mormon. From the highly inappropriate opening to the highly inappropriate ending, I was totally hooked. Trey Parker, Robert Lopez and Matt Stone, who wrote the music, lyrics and book, have taken a simple and quite standard premise of two very different people forced to be together, complete with fallouts, recrimination, redemption, reconciliation and, of course, jazz hands, and made it magical. As far as political correctness goes, well, even after the recent rewrite, it's still not high on the list of things I'd associate with this show, but that doesn't matter. In exactly the same way that Avenue Q gets away with a story that could easily offend, the Book of Mormon does, because at its heart, there is a tale about people who are trying to make sense of their place in a world that just doesn't reflect the things they've been taught to expect. The production is everything you'd expect from a top West End show, with Scott Pask's impressive scenic design and Anne Roth's costumes really adding to the script and music to give the audience a wonderful evening's entertainment. The songs are superb, with each one adding something powerful to either the overall narrative or the story of the character singing it. From my perspective, every song is a winner, but my favourites include Hello, Turn It Off, I Believe, and the wonderfully catchy, but wrong on so many levels, Hasadiga Ibawai, which I'm still humming under my breath. From start to finish, the Book of Mormon is a wonderful example of how theatre can challenge the norm and come out on top. The show originally opened on Broadway in 2011, and then in the UK in 2013. And short of another gift from Heavenly Father like Covid, I can't see it closing any time now. I gave the show five stars on London Theatre One, and if you like this review, this review, then please feel free to comment, share and subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye.